testing, testing, one, two, three, four, five, six. How's it going, guys? Welcome back to this podcast. Is it like super echoey? It sounds pretty echoey right now. The, t- the title's different than it usually is. We are doing a poppy code. We are back to doing poppy codes. I used to do poppy code back on my original channel. Let me fucking fix this microphone really quick as I sp- Okay, so I used to do Poppy Code on the main channel, Winebox Poppy, where you guys would send in questions that you guys want advice to. It's not like a Q&A. It's where you guys actually want me to go deep dive into the question of the problem you're having and actually, actually answer it for you and not be a dick like on the uh, like I am on the main channel. Because usually on the main, that's all about jokes, but this is some serious fucking shit. I can hear people walking upstairs through my headphones. They walk way too fucking loud complaining about my music. Get the fuck out of here. Okay, so we're pretty much just going to start with questions that you guys sent in. You guys can send them in through Instagram, uh, DM, you can comment down below. You can message me anywhere. Just let me know if it's possible copy code so I can screenshot it because I'm definitely not going to remember who you are. This is also completely anonymous. Um, Let me grab my monster really quick. I'm still trying to figure out the lighting and stuff for this. Like the cameras, wait, it's just going to be anonymous because nobody cares. I'm not going to say her name because nobody gives a fuck. People just like to learn from this type of shit, right? So if something bad happened to you, I'm going to keep all the names out of it. And we'll give, we'll give some, obviously some good questions. We're going to try and do like two good. Oh, that's loud as fuck. I'm gonna turn the air off really quick. Could you guys see me? Could you guys see me do it? I don't know if it's in frame. Um, so I'm probably gonna do two longer form ones and probably like two quick answer ones. I'll probably start off with two quick ones. I'll do a long one, a quick one, and then a long one. That's really smart, Mark. And these are not Q&A, so don't ask me Q&A questions or I'm not gonna answer it whatsoever. But what I was saying about like the angle and the lighting, I'm trying to figure out the lighting. When I look directly into it, it's kind of like looking in the sun. Like I can still see, I can still see how bright light that is bright white. And there's also another one right here. And I don't know if it's actually doing anything. And that camera's a little bit taller. I don't really want to, I don't really want to move the whole tripod down. You know what I'm saying? Cause I have some extra, th- you don't give a fuck. I'm just talking to myself. I'm just complaining. Let's go. Okay. So, Hey Poppy, how do you turn your hobby into a career? Music has always been a passion of mine. And despite performing live sets several times, I feel as if I'm inadequate and couldn't profit off of my music. Much love. Well, you definitely should probably feeling inadequate this is probably a really, really common theme between anybody who's artistic, but especially doing music, right? I would say it, it's kind of similar to even, you can look at, I would say a good person to look through for this is Gary Vaynerchuk or even like me, right? For example, because creating tons of content, as much content as possible, he's the best one because he creates as much content as possible around everything. But what I, I kind of think is, you know, make as much music as possible, but also make content around it, right? Like if you're making a new song, like vlog or document the process of writing a new song or what it takes to learn it, maybe start a podcast talking about it just to get other forms of people listening to you without them having to find your music. Because having people trying to find, let's say you come up with a song and you're trying to be an artist, nobody is going to like search for your shit, right? Like the best ways to do it would be for you to put out as much music as you possibly can. Like whenever I would interview rappers, I would always tell them to do like, like what's the max output that you could put out? Because people are always, always ask me about like my work ethic and shit like that and how I'm always so consistent and always posting and doing like so much work type shit. Like I always ask them like, what's the most you could possibly do? And then they tell me, I'm like, do that. And the only people who listen are doing, are doing a lot better. So I would highly suggest trying to put out a lot more content um, or at least a lot more songs, but building content around what you're doing and maybe being like a place of somebody who's trying to come up as a, um, a musician, right? Like that's what I'm doing with the stand-up. Like I want to do vlogs, not vlogs, podcasts based around the beginning of a stand-up type shit. And I think that's really smart for anybody anywhere in any type of field. Hope that helps. But yeah, just... More content. Get your get your fucking shit out there. Okay? Let's see. I need advice. I was in work alone. There was literally no customers, so I decided to watch some of your videos. What I didn't know is that I wasn't alone. My manager, uh, my manager's was actually in the back listening to me laughing. It was a video with Danielle and her friend Beth where you said, if they were scissoring, they looked like two waterbeds colliding. See me laugh at this. She said she, w- <laughs> she, was, <laughs> she was so disappointed. Sorry to laugh at this. She was so disappointed that I'd be... Uh, that I'd find something so vulgar funny. This bitch, this bitch is a cunt, bruh. I need advice on whether I just say sorry or tell her she's a prude virgin cunt and to fuck her job. I feel like that's going to get you fired. Well, how much do you like this? How much do you like this job? You, pro- <laughs> you probably shouldn't be watching this type of stuff out loud at work. I'm not really sure what your policy is, but I feel like 
that's not a good idea. <laughs> Maybe put in some headphones next time. I'm not, I don't know. But I definitely probably wouldn't tell her she's a prude virgin cunt and tell her, and tell her to fuck her job unless you're very willing to lose yours. Um, and I don't know about the saying sorry. I wouldn't say, I definitely wouldn't say sorry. I mean, I would apologize for going against the rules of your work if that's what you broke. But aside from that, I would probably just talk to her and be like, how can you be disappointed that I'd find something so vulgar funny? Yeah, call her a cunt. No, but really just talk to her objectively if you can. That's probably would surprise her, to be honest, to talk and have open communication with somebody you work with. But I highly doubt it because most places don't really have open communication whatsoever with their employees at all. They just kind of dick you around, right? They make you be who you don't want to be. Like, for, this is a perfect example. You were showing a, a little bit of yourself, and now they're like, what the fuck is wrong with you? That's not cool. See, jobs are always fucked with that. That's a really hard thing to break through or even to find a new job. Where, they're, um, where they have a lot of communication or kind of have more openness or kind of like progressive type shit, right? Where they wouldn't care about that or like places are too old school. Like that's insane that there's no customers there and that you would even get reprimanded whatsoever for something you're watching and laughing at that she would even say something like that. It's, that's, that's kind of disrespectful what she said. Like grow the fuck, nut up, nut up bitch, I'll call her. What's her phone number? Okay, okay. So, I've had two guys in the past month making me a side chick when I didn't know about these hoes. Obviously, I stopped talking to both, but what's a really good way to get back at them? Do better for yourself. Do not get back at a human being. That's a ter that's terrible. That's very childish, right? Um, like, what's that going to do? That's definitely going to be putting out terrible energy, right? If that's, if that's like a main thing you're going to be focusing on, that's that's bad, right? That's like not good energy at all. And so other things are going to start reflecting this terrible thought process you're in. Because if you're constantly thinking of how to get back at somebody, that's malicious, right? I don't think they did this to you maliciously. Just dudes are assholes. Like you, you probably, if you don't realize that by now, you will. You'll definitely realize that soon. However, I wouldn't get back at them. The best way to get back at them would be just to better yourself in any way possible, right? Use this as an opportunity to grow and learn. And if you don't like the mistake, I mean, if it's happened twice, it kind of, like, it's not, not to say it sounds like a decision, but like, it's so weird that, hmm, I don't know, maybe switch up. Maybe, I'm not sure. Maybe we should look at inner reflection instead of like outwardly looking at these dudes, right? Like, why are you attracting these types of guys, right? I'm not blaming you whatsoever. Um, but if you were to switch it up and not, I mean, I know that's not the question, but I kind of have to deter because, you should never get back at people. Very bad decision. Um, nothing good is going to come from them whatsoever, right? You want them to get back at you? I mean, did they do anything wrong? Some people like being side bitches, you know? Some people like, some people like that shit. That's a, that's a valuable career. But I would say to not attract people who are willing to have you as a side hoe, right? Or a side chick type shit, I would, I don't know. What you looking for? Why were these the guys who popped up? Why why that happened twice in a month? Like why like what is making these guys? Why are you attracted to guys like with similar qualities type shit? They might be similar guys. I'm not really sure, but I would definitely start with that. The inwardness will reflect outwardly, right? And it will attract people of similar wavelengths type shits. And this is the last question, which I'll probably title the podcast around. Um, so. This person said, how to be strong for your father when he could possibly be dying if you don't feel like you can be strong? Well, see, I had to go through this as well. My father died in November, in November um, 2017, right? Or 2018? <laughs> terrible person. Anyway, um, so how to be strong for, I, I was super strong, right, type shit. Like, I, I would love to know, actually, we have to kind of put down a line really quick of what strong is, right? Because I feel like that is completely subjective between people. Um, especially of like maybe of different sexes, different part of the world, anything like that. Um, especially of your family structure and how you're raised and who you are as a person. Like everybody's not going to expect the same thing from everybody. And if they do, they're stupid. Let me turn this fan up a little bit. One sec. Mm. Let's see here. So how to be strong for your father. If you, if you don't feel like you can be strong, I, I would probably want you to define your own version of strength, right? And kind of proceed from there. I'm gonna try and do it 
right here for you. So I'm trying to try and break down what I did of strength, right? So I'm going to assume most people, when they hear a sentence or question like this, they're trying to be like people, when, especially when it comes from a man, would be somebody who's not um, emo overly emotional. Of course, emotions are good, like especially if your father's dying. You probably should be showing emotions so you're not a fucking sociopath. I think just the, the not... I would say not losing it or losing yourself is a really good start, right? To to focus on probably, I would say as being as strong as a man is like knowing what's gonna happen, right? Understanding what's gonna happen, seeing how like uncomfortable it is. Cause I think like men are really good at being uncomfortable situations, right? And being fine with it or anything that's bad is gonna happen. Um, I'm not sure actually if you're a guy or a girl, actually. Shit. I just kind of assumed a guy for some reason, but this can kind of go either way, really. Ah, oh, fuck. See, I can only talk from the guy perspective, to be honest. I just gotta get my train of thought back. One sec. Mm. Yeah, let's just go back to like the guy's perspective. This is like pretty much the best I can do. And it can kind of be pretty much for everybody, I would say. I mean, even, even like little bits of it can be taken. So let's see, knowing what's gonna happen, this could be for anybody, like, cause if you know what's gonna happen and it's inevitable, even if it is a possibly be dying, um, seeing the inevitable and knowing that you can't control and not letting it affect you, to a degree, of course, it's going to affect you. A loss of a parent is super destructive to everybody involved. Um, however, I would definitely, like know what's gonna happen, kind of not be worried. Uh, just, I, would, I would say just not, don't ruminate and let that consume you. Don't let the things you can't control consume you. Let the things you can control kind of take over, right? Like the time you can spend with a person, how much you can cheer them up, how much, your personalities intertwine and think about all the good things that have happened, all the things that still can happen in between the time of them possibly passing away. Obviously, I'm very, I didn't even hit at you with the super sorry to hear that, by the way. All right, and so, <laughs> the, sincere, that sounded like a little add in there to be, to cover the base, but of course, I super am. That shit's super difficult. Um, and especially what I'm saying is easier said than done, of course, but I think focusing and knowing, like, I would also maybe look up what they're going through to kind of be, um, would it be sympathetic or empathetic? I'm not sure. That, that you, know what I'm, you know what I'm getting at, right? To see what they're going through type shit. So you can kind of not relate, but kind of understand so you can kind of implement how you should act. And maybe, I don't know, maybe focus the energy. I don't know. I'm just keeping, not keeping, keeping things maybe normal, right? And not letting just the detrimental part of emotions affect anything else and make anything else more negative, right? Because the being strong part, if, I, I don't want somebody to feel like they should be strong. And if they feel like they can't, or if you like, be yourself, right? Like, you, this isn't something that's going to make you, it's not gonna turn you, it's not asking you to be something you're not, right? You should just be the most you can be and what you're set up for right now, right? Like there's, I'm not sure how long is left, but I really doubt that any information you're going, you could set yourself up better for success. This is very good that you're like at least self-aware or, or trying to acquire knowledge of it. And I would continue, but I wouldn't hope that anything you're going to learn is going to dramatically change how your emotions or strength is going to be affected, especially like, you know, when people say, if they're asked a question of what they would do in a certain situation and most people would give you an answer, of course you wouldn't know until they're in that situation. It's very easy to say something prior until it actually happens. So even all the studying and knowledge and everything you acquire probably won't have you set up enough for the death of a parent, but it's good to try. So I would say definitely don't put the, uh, don't put the burden too much. That was a really loud, Explosive right there. Um, don't put too much pressure on yourself, right? Like, I don't know, this is like a, um, I never really thought about it like, like that. So, the strong for your father, hmm, I don't know, because you gotta, gotta think about what they're going through, right? Like, this is the, it's very, hmm, it's hard to explain. I mean, obviously, I've never been someone who is going, who's terminally ill. However, you kind of had to put it into perspective of like, I don't know, like it's, it's hard to even be strong for that person when it's the worst possible case scenario, right? There's not anything worse really than death, right? Cause everything you know, and they're gonna start thinking about it. Like I would look up the, 
um, what is it? The four things of death. What is it? Like the bargaining, anger, something like depression or something. And then like acceptance, like look that up. If you, if anybody knows what I'm talking about, like I can't get it off the top of my head. This is like not planned or anything. And just understand maybe the psychology and things that go through it to kind of just understand like what might be going through their mind and what might be going through everybody. So maybe ease you and just understand the hardships and everything that is natural and kind of know what to expect. So you're not, try and minimize the surprises is a very good idea, I would say. And also, hmm, I would say maybe open community. Hmm. I'm not really sure. Like, not open communication with the person. I probably wouldn't ask them how to be strong for them, right? Because you don't want to put any burden, more burden on them type shit. But maybe having open communication with other people and, and allowing other people to help you be strong as well. Because this is probably more of a family thing. I'm not really sure how your family structure is. But if you were to actually help or ask for the assistance of others in this hard time, it would probably be very beneficial, especially since you seem self-aware. And you think if you don't feel like you can be strong. I would also define your strength for yourself and from others, right? But also, if somebody's strength is different than yours, that doesn't make yours wrong. Everybody's different. Everybody has a different mindset of what works and what doesn't. I hope that helps. If you guys have any, anything down below you guys want to add on to what I said, or if I, you think I missed something, comment down below. If you have any questions or advice that you need, comment, DM me. It's always going to stay anonymous. Probably going to try and do these once a week. I have another podcast coming out where I have guests. Both of the podcasts I filmed with two separate guests, like a, a podcast team and my homie, both <laughs> did not, like, they, they were great podcasts. Both ended up not working. I figured out how to make everything work after they both ended up not fucking working. So stay tuned for all those. I got more podcasts coming out here. Mm, check out down below for all the links if you guys want to help support us. Thanks for watching. Thanks for listening everywhere. You can listen everywhere aside from SoundCloud because I'm not paying that shit. Mwah.